Hey folks, Matt from Retavo, and today I'm going to talk to you about picking the right ink for your shop. If you're new to the print game, trying to figure out which ink is best, or you're thinking about testing to test out new inks, this is the video for you. Okay, so over the years, I was lucky enough to work with a couple major manufacturers and sell lots of different brands of inks. Working in hundreds of print shops, testing and seeing what works best, I found a few things that maybe they don't want you to know. Honestly, most of the inks work the same. So don't get held up so much in the this manufacturer or that manufacturer argument. Really look at how they perform. When dealing with inks, I like to look at a few things. Key things are availability, printability, and price. Find which one of those in the sweet spots work best for you. The reason I say that is because the best inks, best inks out there, right? If you can't get them, they're not the best inks for you. So first look at your local suppliers and distribution network to see what inks are available to you and then start testing from there. Make sure you've got a good sales rep that's able to get hands on and is willing to work with you. Don't settle for a sales rep that wears a suit and it only says, here's some products, good luck. Make sure they know what they're doing and they're able to help you test out what that ink's going to do. Now, there's lots of different inks to choose from, right? There's Plastisol, which is traditional inks that you're gonna find in most print shops. They're very rugged, very durable, and pretty easy to print. You can then go into the more economic or green area, which is going to be your water-based and your high solid acrylics. Now, you can choose which inks you wanna use. You can even use all of them in your shop like we do here at Sound and Fury. What matters is what you're trying to do with those inks. So make sure you look at what the laydown is, the viscosity is, the type of garment it's going to go on, and what you want that sheen or matte to look like when you're printing. All right, so first let's dive into what is Plastisol ink. Plastisol ink is really the bread and the butter of the industry. It's the most used inks. Plastisol ink is made from plastics, PVCs. It sits on top of the shirt and you can really build up that stack to have it perform however you want. So Plastisol inks are the most commonly used and are what you're going to find as a utility ink in most shops. Now, when dealing with Plastisol inks, there are different types of Plastisol inks for the substrates they're gonna go on to. So, in a print shop, you're usually going to find cotton shirts, blended shirts, polyester shirts, and nylon shirts. And there are inks that are made for each of those. So, the cotton ink is going to be great for printing on top of cotton goods. It's going to be creamy, it can go through a high mesh count, it's gonna lay down smooth and help mat down the fibers of the cotton. A low bleed ink is going to be great for your blends, your dual blends, your tri-blends. Anything that has a bit of uh, lycra, nylon, uh, any even polyester in small amounts will help make sure to have slight dye blocking characteristics and lay down nice and smooth and can still go through decently high mesh even on a manual press. Now, once you get polyester, into a garment, a majority amount, even 30% polyester or higher, you're gonna start dealing with what we call dye migration. So the excess dye of that garment will start to actually seep into the ink, causing the ink to color shift. So you wanna make sure a polyester ink has dye migration blocking characteristics. So most polyester inks tend to be a little bit more viscous or thicker and may be harder to push through a higher mesh, especially on a manual press. But they're going to have great matting down characteristics blocking characteristics, and some stretchability to make sure they have performance when dealing with polyester and moisture wicking goods. Lastly is nylon inks. Nylon inks tend to be very, very creamy and easy to use. They're not going to have dye blocking characteristics because nylons are color fast. They don't release dye migration. So not gonna be great for your polyesters, but are gonna work very well on nylon materials, help stick to it, and have high stretchability. So it's really important to make sure you understand what garment you're printing on, and then pick the right ink for that. Now, over the years going into shops, I had people often say, I want one ink that can do it all. Sounds like polyester ink can do it all. I should get that, right? Well, you could, but I'm not gonna get as much of a soft hand on a cotton shirt with a poly ink. I'm also gonna be spending a little bit more using a polyester ink on a garment that I don't need those, those features to work on. So most shops are going to have to have multiple options, and I really recommend having one of each, a cotton white, a low bleed white, a polyester white, and a nylon white. Okay, next we're gonna dive into the more sustainable or eco-friendly world of water-based inks. Now, there's some confusion on the word water-based. It can be a few different things, but traditional water-based is going to be very thin and runny. It's really going to be going into the shirt 
not sit on top of the shirt like Plastisol does, or like the next one we're gonna talk about, which is high solid acrylics. So in dealing with water-based, we're talking a lot more about those soft vintage uh, prints as well as discharge prints, which actually suck out the color of the garment, leaving behind whichever color you've chosen. Water-based is a lot of fun and pretty easy to start using. Since it's so watery and runny, you can go through high mesh counts very easily, and you don't have to worry too much about the screens wanting to dry up. It's a great thing to get into if you're not used to doing more vintage soft hand prints, and you want to start off easy in the water-based world. The next thing I want to talk about is in that water-based family, and it's called HSA for High Solid Acrylics. It's going to be similar to the water-based, as in it has water within it. However, it has a high solids acrylic yield, which means it's going to sit on top of the garment as opposed to printing into the garment like traditional water base. HSA is a lot more comparable to the Plastisol family because it does sit on top of that garment. It's going to have the ability for high stretch and nice opacity. Now, if you're new to water base, I do recommend starting with traditional water base first before jumping into high solids acrylics. They do want to dry up much faster in the screen and do have some nuance to printing them effectively. But once you get it, they're a lot of fun to work with and they can get great results, including on performance wear. Another ink that's out there that's not as frequently used is silicone inks. Silicone inks are great for performance wear. They've got the ability to help dye migration stay down and have high stretchability. They're not as commonly used and tend to have some characteristics that make them complex to work with as well, including lots of additives to keep them open on your screen. But it's a great option if you're working in performance wear and want to have a niche to yourself. Oftentimes, printers will ask me, should I even be testing new inks if I'm already happy with what I have? Well, absolutely. Definitely keep your finger on the pulse of the industry, see what new brands are popping up that are gaining traction and popularity, as well as working with your distribution network to figure out what new inks they have available. Even if you're not switching from a manufacturer, they may have a new type of ink within that line that's worth testing out. As ink manufacturers continue with the science of what they're trying to achieve with their inks, inks become easier to use and have better durability in the marketplace. So never settle for what you have, always work with the distribution network and keep your eye on what's popular and test out what works best for you. Ink testing and finding which ink is best can be a very daunting process, but don't get too into the weeds with it. Make sure you work with good distribution, uh, good salespeople that can get their hands dirty with you and figure out which ink works best in your shop. The more you test, the more knowledge you gain on the product and the process, the better the end result's going to be for your shop and your customers. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you've got inks that you like to use, please leave them in the comments, let other people know. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to more. See you soon.